Our world is divided into three zones. The lithosphere, which is the solid earth, the rock that we stand on. The hydrosphere, made up of water, such as rivers, lakes, and the ocean. And the vaporous atmosphere, which we inhabit. But unlike fish that inhabit the seas in three dimensions fully, from top to bottom, we are bottom dwellers, stuck at the bottom of the atmosphere. Which means that we're vulnerable to natural disasters such as earthquakes, tsunamis, floods, and cyclones. In the past decade, more than a million people have been killed by these natural disasters, costing more than half a trillion dollars in property and infrastructure damage. More and more people are moving from the countryside into cities. It's estimated in two decades that two thirds of the world's population will be living in cities. One out of every three people will be living on a seacoast. Arctic ice is melting at unprecedented rates, faster than we anticipated. Rates for sea level rise are probably obsolete, which means that the cities on the coast are vulnerable to these natural disasters and sea level rise. In 2008, New York City held a design competition for post disaster temporary housing. They asked designers to imagine a neighborhood destroyed by a Category 3 hurricane and to propose temporary housing. Cloud City is a concept based on the idea of keeping residents within their community by floating housing above their existing neighborhood, allowing them to participate in the rebuilding of their city. This didn't happen in New Orleans after Hurricane Katrina. More than 50% of the population of New Orleans was displaced after the hurricane. <clears throat> Neighborhoods were broken up. Communities were separated. Cloud City consists of an inflatable bladder filled with helium, which would allow the units to float above existing buildings. <clears throat> they would be prefabricated, stored in warehouses, and rapidly deployed with minimal site intervention, plugging into existing utility lines. This early project was a discovery in ungrounded architecture, architecture that can peel up off of the surface of the Earth. And it started a, a several-year-long process of research into the atmosphere, its structures, its qualities, and also ways in which we can support objects in the air, such as balloons, kites, and satellites. We found out that helium is actually a finite resource with limited supply. It's not renewable. So balloons are not so very practical. We looked at large man-lifting kites and stable structures in the atmosphere, such as the polar vortex or the jet stream, with constant winds of 150 kilometers an hour that could support large weights. And then satellites, the space station, and the space elevator, which depend on orbital mechanics and gravity to suspend things in the air. We also surveyed architecture from the beginnings of history, when people still lived in tents and were nomadic. Since humans moved out of caves, buildings have become taller and taller over time, starting with the pyramids, the pagodas, cathedrals, the Eiffel Tower, the Empire State Building, and the Burj Dubai today. As buildings have become taller, and lighter, more transparent, we've started migrating into the sky. Since 1989, there's been a group of people constantly living 400 kilometers above Earth's surface in a laboratory called the Space Station. On any given day, there's a million people in the sky traveling on airplanes right now. Analima Tower is a concept for a floating skyscraper. Throughout history, we've had an increasing effect on our environment. Today, our impact is registered on a global scale. 
Hannah Lima Tower proposes inverting the traditional diagram of Earth-based foundations, instead depending on a space-based support. By hanging a high-strength cable from an orbiting asteroid, we can then build a tower onto the cable. The tower would be placed into an eccentric orbit, allowing it to travel between the southern and northern hemisphere on a daily basis. It would be constructed along the cable, stretching several thousands of kilometers from the surface to a place up in the atmosphere. Programmatic uses would be distributed vertically along the tower, with business and commercial uses towards the bottom, and ceremonial or funerary uses towards the top, and residential and gardening or greenhouse uses in between. The tower taps into our desire for extreme height, seclusion, and mobility, tapping the power of planetary design thinking. Its energy would be provided by a space-based solar system, panels placed above the density of the atmosphere with constant exposure to the sun. They'd be far more efficient than surface-based solar panels. Access to the tower would be provided by transfer stations along the surface, as well as passenger drones, or for a quick way down, parachutes. If we can build a single building like this, then why not multiply it and build a city that's suspended off of the, the surface of the Earth? Imagine a single city, a mega city, that would house the world's population. If it was at the density of Paris, how big would this city need to be? It turns out we can house 7 billion people in a city that's half a kilometer wide and 10,000 kilometers long and about 80 stories high. Again, hacking the idea of the space elevator, which has been around for a while, we can attach a counterweight to the top of the cable, and at the bottom, we can build towers off of the Earth's surface. We can multiply these towers to build an entire city that wraps around the equator of the Earth, freeing up the surface to allow it to regrow, regenerate, and become wild again. This idea proposes that people living in current cities move to this one single city around the equator. This relocation can be negotiated. For example, if neighboring countries who aren't friendly with each other move to the city, they could be, maybe be dispersed along the equator. <clears throat> the city would stretch along the equator, occupying a sweet spot where there are no seasons, where the day and night are equal length, and the temperatures are stable at about 20 degrees centigrade. So we wouldn't have the need for heating or air conditioning. It would be optimized, energy efficient. A portion of the surface could be left over for managed autonomous agriculture, farming to feed the city above. This new organization and adjacency of people would necess necessitate new forms of living and a new politics of cooperation. By condensing and minimizing our footprint on the surface of Earth, we can allow it to regenerate and regrow while preserving humanity from the hazards of living on the surface. Thank you.